Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna cover some Eidolon hunting stuff. I know, I know this topic isn't as hot a topic these days, but hey, I still remember my roots. This is first and foremost an Eidolon channel and a late game focus channel second. We're going to go over some tips and tricks that only the most fervent runners have come across. Of course, a full list of tips and tricks is near exhaustive due to the nature of this game mode, so this is just a curated selection I've personally picked. I'm certain there will be some new to you on this list, and I'd love it if you stuck all the way through, even if just listening in the background, so please remember to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Let's get this party started. Our first tip is probably one of the widest no newer changes recently. When you reach MR30, you gain access to the True Master's font buff. This lets you select between a 3 hour buff for affinity, resource, drop chance, credit, health, shields, and damage, and has a 23 hour cooldown. What you may not know is this damage bless affects operators as well. It is a 25% damage increase, and because amps have so few ways to buff their damage, this is actually pretty significant. It makes one-shotting shields easier, team strats more reliable, and perhaps most importantly, solo runs much less stressful. So if you're interested in hunting or just need a little extra push to reach your next full set pace, remember that picking up a damage blessing from a relay is always an option. Our second tip is for all of your bug frame needs. Add your K drive onto your gear wheel. You'll thank me later. Even better, keep on it to something you can remember. The K drive is the almighty savior against almost all bugs in Eidolon hunting. If you experience some bug, the first thing you should try is to hop on your K drive. Hopping back off it should fix all your bugs. If it doesn't, then this is a bug variant that will only be fixed by dying. Sorry. K drive fixes all bugs that can be fixed by jumping in water or going into Archwing. However, jumping into water or Archwing does not fix all bugs K-Drive can. Our third tip is concerning Focus Waybounds. The Basilisk Gaze from Uneru's flavor text states it improves your Void Blast radius. What it doesn't tell you is that it also affects Propa Falloff. This is actually pretty important, and I would strongly recommend picking it up after unbinding your first three Waybounds for Void Siphon and Void Flow from Zeneric and Mind Sprint from Neramond for Operator Energy Regeneration, Operator Energy Max, and Dash Sprint Speed Buffs, respectively. It will make your Propa more effective, which is one of the meta amp parts and extremely important for dealing with Water Shield falloff and recovery when you run out of Void Strike stacks. Now our fourth tip. This is a bit of another off-meta tip. If you want a different kind of lure handler besides Wisp or Trinity, then the best suggestion for me would be Ivara. She is unique in that she can get three Vomvolus charges per Vomvolus. Three charges? That's strange. Well, this means a single Vomvolus is enough to charge a lure to full. How would you do this, you may ask? With Prowl, of course. Using Prowl steals a charge orb from them, and then if you kill them while they're in Prowl, they will be sucked into the lures again as a second charge, and then they will also drop another charge orb upon death for a total of 3 charges per Vomvolus. It's a nice casual way to make sure your lures are charged, so if you want something different to try, Avar works extremely well and makes lure handling easy. Just keep in mind this means you can't heal the lures and you won't have any speed buffs from Wisp if you do this. Our fifth tip builds upon the fourth one. If you're having trouble charging lures during the fight as a lure handler, remember there's actually no difference between lure charging and fast charging. You can use the same fast charge spots and techniques to charge lures later, so long as teammates or the Eidolon aren't too close. The mechanics are the exact same, so here are some spots. The Crown Force Spawn, the Hill Force Spawn, the East Camp Force Spawn from this tree, the Cliff Force Spawn, then the Lake Force Spawn, East Shore Force Spawn, the Drill Camp Force Spawn, the options are endless. Practice and you will succeed. Now comes the second half of the list, where we keep the spicier tips. For our sixth tip, let's take a look at Magus Lockdown. Using this arcane can actually break the AI of the Eidolon, giving you a brief moment where it stands still. It is much more reliably done as host and client, and is extremely important for solo runs. You can see timing at right freezes the Eidolon in place, so I can take down the shield and clearly shoot the limb before it moves out of the way. There are certain rules to this though. You cannot refresh Lockdown's stun until it is fully expired. He is only stunned for the first 4 seconds, so if you keep spamming Lockdown you will be unable to freeze him again after those first 4 seconds until they all expire. You can only freeze him between animations when he is idle. This means not walking, not attacking. 
You can predict this and queue up a single lockdown, say half a second in advance when you expect the shields to become vulnerable again, or say when his step or attack ends. This way you basically set up a stun for the next time his animation finishes. However, the 4 second countdown starts as soon as you dash, so if you dash, say, half a second early, you will only get a 3.5 second stun. And again, you will have to wait for the next animation and make sure no lockdown is active before we can stun him again. Although it is possible to chain the start and end of a stun perfectly together to stun him twice or more times in quick succession before he moves, but this is hard to pull off and requires a lot of practice. This is especially useful for dealing with day walking and in solo to keep him in place, although at some point after day starts, you will no longer be able to stun him. Seventh tip. If you're using Eclipse as your helmet buff, and your PC can tolerate it, turn the graphics engine to enhance and turn dynamic lighting off. This will give you the strongest light buff possible in planes being near max Eclipse value so long as you aren't in the shadow. This is actually several times stronger than Roar. If your PC can't handle enhanced well, then play on Classic, but leave all these lighting settings off. Eclipse will still be slightly stronger than Roar outside of shadows. Eighth tip is probably useful for everyone. Ever wonder how the fastest runners can tell whether the Adlon is spawning close left or close right at Shrine? Look at these clips closely. Not only is the close left spawn pillar further away, but actually on the close right spawn, you can see the Adlon's jellyfish that's attached to its head underwater. If you see this glow down here in the water even lower than the pillar, then you know it's spawning to face close right. If you don't see this, it's close left. This jellyfish glows appears even before the pillar, so technically this lets you get to close right even faster if you recognize it in time. Ninth tip. So you may have seen my daywalk guide in the past. If not, you can find it in the top right corner with the cards. It's basically a guaranteed way to daywalk even in the case of most bugs. However, there is an easier way to do this now, and it also helps in another way. If you bring a Bone Widow to a hunt, yes, a Bone Widow, not a Voidrig, you can move the Eidolon around with its 3 firing line. If you move the Eidolon into the water during healing phase, the Vomblis that normally spawn inside of its butt can't spawn over the water, so they will spawn over the land instead. This gives you a near endless supply of Vomblis to charge your leers with and makes lure handling much easier. Now for daywalking, the implications are obvious. You can draw the Eidolon far away from the water as it's even rising out to spawn or after the first limb break. You can safely take it to a space where it cannot despawn. However, keep in mind, if the Eidolon touches a despawn spot after the limb break when it's day, even if you move it afterwards, but before it stands up again, it will still despawn. So keep that daywalk god I made above in handy. This is also technically a bug, so we don't know when it will get patched. Take advantage of it while it lasts, I guess? But I still recommend learning how to charge lures properly, like the spots I showed earlier, and proper daywalking according to my daywalk guide, so that you will still be able to do that in the event this quote-unquote feature gets patched. And finally, the 10th tip. This one is for you solo runners out there to save you some heartache and plat. So if you're throwing Contagion to break lames, you can actually immediately cast your 2 afterwards to cancel the swing animation on Volt and prevent you from hitting your Volt shield. This means you won't need a minus range ribbon if you can do it reliably. It is difficult and takes practice, but hey, this is your zero plat alternative to a minus range ribbon. Also, Volt's 2 animation cancels out almost everything in the game also and is an instant cast, so say if you're using Redeemer to DPS and you miss or shoot early with the heavy attack, casting speed will remove the heavy attack cooldown that prevents you from using again immediately. Try it out! And here's one bonus trick for you. You can teleport the Lear loot inside of a cave before it pops. You only have 15 seconds for an entire Lear to teleport, so you gotta be quick. Good luck. It is a little bit trolly. Oh, and if the Lyra gets too close to a wall inside, your sentient cores and loot will pop inside, whereas the shard goodies will pop up outside on the map on top of the cave. Well, I hope this information provided you has been useful. Go out there and show them what I've taught you. These are your 10 secret tips that the advanced Eidolon hunters don't tell you. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible, like I've done with covering the Tempest Story and the Sisters of Parvos dev shop. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get you the info first once the Sisters of Parvos mainline drops on July 6th. You don't want to miss out on that day one Urelli content, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.